<laughs> you will not believe what I picked up. Ta-da! I picked up the freaking New Revision Song Contest 2002 CD. And okay, I know what you're thinking. 2002 really wasn't a good year, but you know what? It was better than 2001, so you have to admit that. And you know, it's got some decent songs. You know, I really liked France that year. And okay, Israel really wasn't that bad. And you know, and then France. France was really freaking awesome. France should have won. I don't know why I laughed for one, but you know what? This is freaking awesome. And I'm going to listen to my entire freaking collection. Because that's complete my collection. I'm going to listen to my entire collection all the freaking time from now on, like 24-7. You know why? You know why? Because the contest is less than a month. That's right, 2013 is in less than a freaking month. Oh, are you psyched? I'm psyched. I am so freaking psyched. I'm going to be listening to this all the freaking time because you know what? I ended up picking up this DVD too and so okay, we're going to have to reset the regions on your DVD player because... Hello, I'm Regev, that Eurovision guy. Welcome to An American's Guide to Eurovision. Now, on our first episode, I want to answer an important question that a lot of you guys may have. No, seriously, what the hell is Eurovision? Now, technically, Eurovision is a series of broadcasting networks that share news, sports, and other programming. But when you see things like, oh, I don't know, this, or uh, this, or even this right here, there's only one Eurovision that could be referring to, and that's the Eurovision Song Contest. Or it could be the Junior Eurovision, for the sake of brevity and sanity. Let's just pretend that one doesn't exist and just focus on the Eurovision Song Contest. The Eurovision Song Contest started in 1956 and the setup is pretty simple. Take a bunch of European countries, each one has an original song, have the rest of the countries vote on it, and then tally up the scores via jury and televote. And whoever wins, wins. Now, it might come as a bit of a surprise to you, but you may already know a song or a singer from Eurovision and not even realize it. I think one of the best examples, one of the most popular songs from the history of the contest, ABBA, Waterloo, song competed in 1974 and gave Sweden its first win. So, wait, so here's ABBA, but... Who, who are these people? You may remember Ooh Ah just a little bit. That was the UK, 1996. Eighth place. Who sings this song? Um, Gina G. Great. Let's keep it that way. If you're old enough, you might remember Eres Tu. That's one of the few non-English songs to chart here in the States. And that was Spain, 1974. And yeah, I, I don't know what's wrong with her eyes either. If you're even older, you might remember Volare. Dean Martin covered the song, and it was Italy's 1958 entry. Di di blu, di stare oh, oh, oh. Who sings the song? A ton of famous artists took part, like Leo Iglesias, Olivia Newton-John, Celine Dion, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Tattoo, the fake Russian lesbians, not the guy from Fantasy Island, just so that we're clear. Even 
think freaking Bonnie Tyler is taking her chances at the contest. Yeah, that Bonnie Tyler. Almost by Tyler, but all right. A few tried their hands at representing their countries, and they kind of fell short. Like Nightwish, Army of Lovers. Yeah, that Army of Lovers. And even Taco. Freaking put it on the Ritz taco. Different types who wear a day coat, pants with the stripes and cut away coat, perfect fits. Putting on the Ritz. Mm. Other people had a hand in it, like Elton John, Apocalyptica. Lead singer of AHA uh -huh, hosted back in 1996. River Dance even got its start here as an interval act. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to apologize for that one too, aren't I? Sorry. But by far, the most famous person to ever take part in the Eurovision Song Contest. Epic sax guy. I'm Greg Ev, and stay tuned for another episode of An American's Guide to Eurovision.